Modern medicine blows me away. Before vaccination, viruses like smallpox or polio would often lead to death. Before antiseptics, common infectious diseases meant that anything from a cut finger to giving birth could often lead to death. Before antibiotics, bacterial diseases like urinary tract infections and pneumonia could often lead to death. Before paracetamol, hangovers really sucked and basically felt like death. But we have a problem on our hands. Vaccines and antibiotics are losing their power. Big diseases are on the way back and it's all our fault. We're screwing all this up in two ways. One, people saying no to vaccination and two, people misusing antibiotics. Let's start with the first one. Choosing to not be vaccinated against something without a good reason makes you a potential carrier for a disease, whether polio, measles, mumps, tetanus, whooping cough, or whatever. Okay, fine, that's your choice. You're probably unlikely to catch something because almost everyone else has been vaccinated, but you could be a carrier with no symptoms, or if a source of that disease reappears, you can be a safe haven for it to hide, thrive and be passed on to others. And that could include young people whose immune systems haven't developed enough to respond to vaccines yet, or vulnerable people with compromised immune systems. That's the thing. Horrific diseases can stay alive in a population by stowing away in just a few healthy but unvaccinated people. Vaccines may have almost killed all those diseases off, but there's one thing standing in their way, us. But what about bacterial illnesses that we don't vaccinate against? We've got those nailed, right? We just head to the doctors and get a box of magic pills. Antibiotics, please, doc. A question for you, though. Have you ever got through half the course, felt better, not taken the rest, save them for the next time you're feeling rubbish? Well, that's just one reason why our protective antibiotic bubble may be about to burst. If you stop partway through a course of antibiotics, you may feel better, but you may not have killed all the bacteria in your body. The ones that survive are likely to be the most resistant to antibiotics, the ones that need the whole course to be wiped out, and having them hanging around is dangerous. Bacteria are organisms subject to the same pressures of evolution as other creatures like lions or humans. Having them hanging around is dangerous because, as we discovered with the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park, life will find a way. Let's imagine a population of bacteria. As Darwin pointed out, in all natural populations there's a struggle to survive. There's also huge variety and many helpful genes will exist scattered across our bacteria population. One to cause disease A, one to reproduce faster, one that might be resistant to a particular antibiotic that they're unlikely to be in the same bacterium. Let's say the gene for antibiotic resistance exists in a small proportion of the bacteria population. If an antibiotic comes along, it will kill a big chunk of the rest of the population, leaving a smaller group in which most of the bacteria will have that antibiotic resistance gene. You'll end up with a population that contains a greater percentage of antibiotic resistance genes than you had in the original population which means your antibiotics have lost their power. And that scenario is essentially what's happening now. From people not finishing their full dose of antibiotics to humans giving antibiotics randomly to cattle, we're giving those bacteria the chance to become resistant and multiply through the population. Malaria is a good example. The only malaria parasites that survive an onslaught of drugs and thrive afterwards are those which are resistant to it. And that has meant that many malaria medicines are now no longer working. And the same is true with drugs for salmonella, E. coli, TB. It's actually gone so far with gonorrhea infections that most are now untreatable. In effect, we are vaccinating germs against the drugs we want to use against them. Oh, and to make the problem worse, we haven't discovered any new antibiotics since the 1980s. There is currently a £10 million prize fund for the person that can discover the next class of antibiotics. Jot that down, something you might want to try. But how would you go about discovering a new antibiotic? Well, you just need to expose some disease bacteria to a new chemical and see if it kills it off. Can history help? Well, one of the most famous antibiotics, penicillin, is just mould. It works by breaking down bacteria's cell walls, by binding to structures on them that aren't present on our body's own cells. Other antibiotics work by getting inside bacteria and stopping them making the things they need to grow. The leading contender for the 10 million prize at the moment is a molecule found in soil called tyxobactin. 
It's been found to kill a whole class of bacteria, including anthrax, TB, and severe diarrhea. And it works by targeting fat in bacterial cell walls, which does not exist in mammalian cells, which is great because it means it's safe for humans. All fingers and toes are crossed because Tyxobactin has another huge plus point. The fat it targets is unlikely to evolve, meaning there's a much reduced chance of antibiotic resistance evolving. Tyxobactin could be the antibiotic we've been looking for. So don't say no to vaccination, finish your full course of antibiotics and raid the fridge for anything mouldy to experiment on. Not only may it win you 10 million pounds, it may be the key to protecting us all. Death, the final destination, the great equaliser, whether prince or pauper, we all end up in the same place, in the ground.